Are you sick of car payments? Well, stick around because today we are taking a look at the 2005 Honda Accord, a car that could do just that for you, but we are going to decide if it's a buy or if it's a bust. This 05 Accord right behind me has 180,000 miles and is now nearly 20 years old. Hondas are known for their reliability. They redesigned the Accord in 03. This generation ran from 2003 to 2007. And while Honda does have a great reputation, we are going to check out the good, the bad, the ugly on this car and see if it still holds up after all this time. As we start our tour around the outside, you'll see that the headlights are fairly sun damaged. I have lots of cues that this car has been an outdoor car and in the sunlight for most of its life. That being said, the typical Honda paint peeling and everything is minimal on this but not non-existent there's actually a repaired section up above the roof poorly repaired but that is from Honda's typical issues with peeling paint as we go back the side and nothing really particular to note other than inside the rear wheel wells rust is starting to bubble bubble and we are in the northeast so that's pretty typical nothing terribly concerning yet but you definitely want to get under and look at it. Nothing too notable there on the back end. These taillights do have a tendency for the gaskets to go bad and water to get inside. There's a little bit more rust on the passenger side wheel well, and this car does have a little bit of body damage that is not hot in this fault at all. As far as styling, I would call these sort of ugly, but I'm used to them now. Under the hood here, we have the three liter VTEC V6 that pumps out 240 horsepower and 212 pound-feet of torque. Now this engine is a pretty reliable engine itself, but there's some accessories and things around it that we need to talk about because there is some common failure points. Number one is the power steering pump and really the power steering system in general. Leaks and pump failure are extremely common. Probably the number one issue with these cars is power steering problems. Now, they aren't the most expensive thing to fix. They can be a little noisy while they're go if they're going bad um, and just can cause some annoyance, but really I probably wouldn't shy away from the car just because of those. The next common problem related to the engine are engine mounts. If you're getting a vibration, uh, it feels like your car is really, really clunky or it's clunking between shifts, it is likely your engine mounts. They are just made out of rubber. They go bad over time. They go bad more frequently on this Honda Accord than they do in some other cars. This is also not a terribly expensive fix. I'm not worried about it, but it could be something you wanna look at. The next thing that isn't as common as those last two issues is the starter. These starters, it's kind of a typical Honda problem. The starter motor tends to go bad. They're a few hundred dollars, but if you go out and your car doesn't start, that can be pretty inconvenient to leave you sitting there. The next thing on my list really is not a problem at all, but it is common maintenance and it's a little more excessive than some other cars. The timing belt on these engines is supposed to be replaced right around 100,000 miles. It is a more expensive procedure. It is fairly involved and you're going to pay for it. So if you're looking at one of these cars with around 100,000 miles or over, you're gonna need to ask if the timing belt has been done. Even if it's 200,000 miles, but it was been done at 100,000 miles, you're getting ready to have to take care of that again. This particular car does not leak or burn any oil, but it is something you wanna look at on these. It's not terribly common for oil leaks like some vehicles, but you will see them from time to time. And before we move on to the transmission, I do just wanna say that the four cylinder engines in these, the more base engine is extremely reliable. It's a timing chain, so you don't have that maintenance. They are a really, really solid engine. I'm not doing like a full, full review on them, but I would not shy away from them. They are the better, more reliable engine even than the V6. Now to the transmission, and unfortunately the transmissions in these are not terribly reliable. They're not terribly unreliable, but they're one that needed to be maintained regularly with fluid changes and things, or they tend to have basically a catastrophic failure and you have to replace the transmission. Could be just a leak or something low fluid or 
dirty fluid, but generally once these transmissions start to go, you're gonna be looking at replacement. So take it on a test drive, see if the transmission shifts well, look at the fluid, and see if it looks like it's been maintained at any point during the life of the car if you're looking at a higher mileage one. Lots of people have still gotten two, three hundred thousand miles out of the factory transmission on these, but it is something that pops up fairly often that you'll see that the transmissions are bad in these cars. As we open the door to the interior, you're going to notice one very common Honda problem right away, and that is that I have to open this door the entire way to get to one of the bumps, the checks as they're called, in the door that keep your door open. Uh, they are worn out and you have to go to the very final one. Otherwise the door will just slam shut This is a pretty common Honda problem and they need to replace They actually make a little clicking as well when you open and close the door The interior overall in this has not held up great or terrible I think most of the wear and tear especially on the leather you'll notice that these seats the stitching has uh, come apart there is due to neglect. I don't think that these have ever been conditioned. I think it sat out in the sun a lot. It's just really hard dried out leather. And in a way, I can't really fault Honda for that, but there's other cars out there that also have been neglected and the leather has worn better. With the exception of the leather seats being a little bit rough condition here, I actually have always liked the interior on these cars. I think they're nicer than the Camry. I think Honda did a good job redesigning them. I think they're functional, they feel nice, and they feel a little bit higher end than some of the competition out there. That being said, it is not perfect in here, and there is one glaring issue that I could have mentioned under the hood, but I saved it till now, and it is a typical, inexcusable Honda problem, and that is air conditioning. The compressor is bad on this for the AC. Honda could just not figure out how to keep an AC system working in the mid 2000s. This car is no exception, the AC does not work. It's fairly expensive to repair and have repaired. And it is really uh, a sore spot for Honda <laughs> in their reliability is their AC systems are just junk. These Accords also have one other big common problem on the inside and that is the ignition switch. The ignition switch where you put your key in and turn has a tendency to fail and basically you just go out and your car doesn't start. So I know I mentioned the starter e earlier, that could be a problem as well as the actual ignition switch where you put your key in has a tendency to fail on these. It's very, very common. And while we're talking about electronic issues, the door lock actuators that control your locks, whether they go up and down, also have a tendency to fail. Those are not expensive. It's not a concern to me, um, It's but it is something that you could run into. Otherwise, the interior, the dash, all of those things have actually held up really pretty well. The door handles, the chrome on them is peeling. That was a common thing across all manufacturers back in the mid 2000s. Um, but it's actually a very comfortable place to be. I like the seat shape. I like all of those things. It's pretty spacious. Um, I really don't hate it. It doesn't have navigation or any of the uh, you know screens or anything yet. So it has a basic radio, which is still very functional. Um, there's actually a lot to like inside these cars. In the back seat, I actually noticed one thing right off that I didn't pay attention to up front because it's not an issue up there, and that is headliner. The headliner is starting to fall back here, and that can be pretty frustrating and pretty ugly once they do, uh, but it's got some loose spots. The seats themselves are okay. They're not great. They're semi-comfortable. The leg room is decent. Headroom is okay. It's not great headroom. Um, it's just a run-of-the-mill mid-size car. One of the things that I like about the Honda interiors over at Toyota, um, in the back, the door panels here are still soft and they're the same materials that the front door panels have. Toyota does not do that. It'll be all hard plastic and I just think this is a nice touch. It makes it nicer for the people in the rear. All right, we are pulling out on to the road in the Honda Accord. Now, my family actually used to have one of these, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, the one thing I noticed, and our other one was like this as well, is the uh, throttle pedal is pretty sensitive, but I always liked the power that these engines gave. So let's do a little pull and see what happens. Yeah, the engines pull really, really well. The transmission on this one is shifting smooth. I got no issues with that. Um, no, it feels, it feels like a really solid power plant, and that's, uh, you know, kind of typical for these Honda V6s. The fuel mileage is like 21 and 30 out on the highway, which is respectable. I got no issues with that fuel mileage at all from this generation of cars. That is pretty typical. 
I will say that it's about 90 degrees today and the AC is a real issue. And it's a real issue that you need to think about if you're looking at Hondas in this generation is you're going to have to replace AC stuff. There's just no way around it. Even the aftermarket stuff still fails. Um, it's just not a good system. I don't know what Honda did wrong. I just know that they fail. At this mileage, I usually do see some struts and some other suspension wear start to pop up on these pretty typically. Not terribly expensive, but it is something that you gotta keep in mind. As I'm just driving around here, I am reminded how much nicer the inside of these are than the comparable Camry. This is not a comparison review really, but it is the main competitor, so I have to bring it up. Um, I enjoy driving these and the inside of the car so much more than I do on Camrys of the same age. I would say overall the driving experience in these is very good. Um, considering the age of the car, the other cars that it's comparable to, I would pick based on driving experience the Honda every time. Um, I think it's probably the best out there. And while it's not a perfect car, as far as a day-to-day -day living with it, uh, it might be it might be the best on the market from this generation. Back from the test drive and it is now time to decide if this is a buy or a bust. First off, I wanna make a few notes and the, the main one is that while this car has the V6, I think the best option for you to pick one of these up is the four cylinder. Yes, it's slower, not as fun to drive, but it's not like the V6 is some crazy, you know, powerful sports car. I think that the four cylinder is more reliable for sure, less maintenance, and overall the better option for this car. That being said, I wouldn't shy away from the V6, but you are gonna deal with a few more maintenance issues. The biggest hurdle for me to recommend this car with the V6 to you is the timing belt. Unless someone has perfect records, you're probably not going to know whether the timing belt has been done, and then you almost have to get it checked out or have it replaced, which is going to be an additional expense on top of buying the car. The price on these runs between four and five thousand dollars for a pretty nice one probably even nicer than this one which i think is run-of-the-mill cost for cars of this age maybe a little bit on the higher side because you do have the honda reputation today we are going to call this car a buy even with the v6 but it's a definite buy with the four cylinder with the v6 you just have to be prepared for a little bit more maintenance and you got to know about the timing belt to see whether it's been done. Now, if you have a Honda Accord, I want to know your thoughts. I want to know the problems you've had. If you agree with me, disagree with me, it's all good. Just put those comments down below so I can hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you